I'm Robert Lawrence June, and here's what I'm watching. Foreign companies doing business in China. Perceptions, opportunities, challenges. No sugarcoating here. There is anxiety, economic concerns, geopolitical tensions, which could lead to public backlash, even boycotts. Expanded national security awareness, including anti-spying laws, and a sense that Chinese companies have the advantage. A survey by the British Chamber of Commerce in China found 70% of foreign companies want greater clarity before making new investments. According to the American Chamber of Commerce in China, U.S. business optimism about China has fallen to record lows. U.S.-China tensions along with China's economic slowdown were the top concerns, which 60% of the survey's 325 corporate respondents cited as significant challenges. Moreover, unease about China's regulatory environment rose, with fines, raids, and other actions, which China says were due to illegal actions, but which some perceive as making doing business in China risky. Although many respondents pointed to U.S. government policy rather than China's when asked about pressures to decouple. Still, 52% of U.S. businesses were optimistic about the five-year China business outlook. Indeed, Apple and Tesla are doing very well. The new iPhone 15 drew long queues and sold out quickly. At the same time, according to the German Chamber of Commerce in China, 55% of German companies are planning to increase investment in China in the coming two years. From China's perspective, foreign companies continue to be important in terms of technology and know-how, making Chinese markets more competitive and thus more responsive to Chinese consumers. Moreover, by showing that China's markets are open, foreign companies doing well counters the complaint that China wants open and free markets for Chinese products in foreign countries, but not for foreign products in its own country. China State Council has made attracting foreign companies a priority for promoting new type industrialization, advanced manufacturing, supply chain security, breakthrough technologies. It issued 24 policies and measures to attract foreign investment with a market-oriented legalized and international first-class business environment. Policies include ensure national or equal treatment for foreign invested enterprises, strengthen foreign investment protection, and increase fiscal and taxation support. Premier Li Chang, in particular, has made facilitating foreign companies in China a prime part of his job meeting at the World Economic Forum in Tianjin with more than 120 business executives, Li called for multinational corporations to focus on China's side-tech innovation sectors, stressing that China would open up new space for business investment and promising great opportunities for cooperation as China builds a modernized industrial system and boosts domestic demand. Engaging with global financial institutions, Pan Gongsheng, governor of the People's Bank of China, stated unreservedly that China will continue to open its markets for businesses from around the world, in contrast, he said, to attempts by the U.S. and its allies to restrict normal investment activities. Pan listened to opinions and suggestions, specifically on expanding market access for foreign financial services firms. He had in-depth discussions on hot issues and responded to some suggestions when holding a symposium with heads of foreign financial institutions and foreign-funded enterprises in Shanghai earlier. Through all this, the American Chamber is encouraging American companies to invest in China, stating, in a world marked by turbulence, one thing remains certain. Organizations ready to embrace challenges are best positioned to serve their customers and stakeholders effectively. I'm Keeping Watch. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn.